Hello guys, it's Conrad from Variety Gamers bringing you some Dirt 3 gameplay. Now, since I'm the second man of the Variety Gamers channel, I'm going to be doing some stuff that Josh isn't covering, namely Dirt 3. So, let's just get straight into it. I'm going to be doing some Rally in Monte Carlo. It's going to be an introduction, really, to, well, my end of the channel. And just some Dirt 3 content, I guess. I'm going to be going with the Audi Quattro, and this is a car, I believe, that has won about... How many? 23 rallies. This is a really, really fast car. Honestly, it does look better than a lot of cars that I've seen today in rally. It is an absolute legend. Now, I'm going to not st stop talking and I'm actually going to get into the thick of it. As you know, Monte Carlo is a really hard track to really go along. It's I know that Codemasters didn't really deviate much on them, but I know that Monte Carlo, out of all the DLC that they released, has to be my favourite. And in an Audi Quattro, it does not get much better than this, people. This is it. <laughs> so yeah, I'd just go with short gearboxes. It's a tight track, but it's pretty fun nevertheless. When you are going through crap loads of corners and so on, you the ice on the, it's is bad. But Col St. Roche is just 100% tarmac, even though it says that it's 33% snow. It isn't. It's just on the icy section if you go on the other few tracks. Now, I'm probably going to go with, yeah, as I said, a short gear ratio, high downforce, and pretty stiff suspension. Actually, I'll go with a low ride height too. So, I'm playing this on a reasonably hard level. I'm playing, yeah, single player, as you noticed. <laughs> and it's Group B no mix here, so this should be pretty clean cut. using the manual gearbox as well. This really does push your time sometimes. The automatic one I find to be really irritating. It doesn't work for me. But yeah, as you can tell, I really love Monte Carlo just for the views. The fact that it's another snow rally. Well, a few class ices that anyway. And just these turns, look at that. This is like a 180, maybe 160 degree turn there. They really do not give you any quarter, you've got to push it right through. I know I make this look quite quick, but this, may I remind you, is a 550 brake horsepower rally car. This is back in the days when people did not regard safety as the number one thing in rallying. This is a true beast. And I just think that if they brought these things back to the modern day in rally, there would be some more, there would be much more attention to the world of rallying than there is today. I mean, look at it, Loeb's just constantly winning everything. It is 1.6 litre or 2 litre, I don't know. But this is just insane. It's a contender. The first thing that brought four-wheel drive to the party and brought power along with it. But yeah, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to let you watch the rest of this in peace and listen to this beauty. Left 
three minutes straight. Wow. Not half bad. But yeah, I will give it. I was playing on difficulty, difficulty level five, I think. I don't really use many assists except ABS. So that does mean that I am quite... I get a lot of control over how the car goes. I find traction control annoying. I find it really good to be in control of the raw power of the thing. It's a fun thing to have, I guess. And with the Audi Quattro, it really proves why this car did win 23 rallies and a couple of WRC titles. Because back in the day, this thing was on fire. A lot of other Group B cars overtook it eventually due to its weight. But still, even I think that with stuff like, say, the RS200 and the Lancias, they were good, but they're just not the same. It just they seemed like they just stepped ahead, and then when Group B got banned, we just got left with the 1990s, which was still pretty good rally. Well, enough of that. I'm going to try and go for another run. I fancy more snow than ice, and this time I think I'll go with a pro car. Something a bit different. I've got a mate who's Norwegian, actually, so Norway it is. Right. Personally, I'm going to go with the Fiesta. This thing... I prefer it to the most of the other cars in the championship at the moment, so I'm just going to stick with this. So it's Norway then. It's tipping down with snow, which means visibility is... Well, I don't know what visibility is, but it's not going to be good. I'm going to go with a reasonably short gear ratio. I know it's bad, but stiff and low. This is going to really throw me about. And a pretty nice rear brake bias. Why not? So yeah, there's my difficulty settings if you've just wanted to see them, just to see what I run. I find that, yeah... Norwegian rallies are a bit more complex. They do tend to keep, the AI does tend to go a lot faster than say they do in Monte Carlo. I don't know what it is. I'm just fast on tarmac, but not on snow. But nevertheless, Norway is up there with my favourites. They must have copied this off Top Gear, though. I swear they have. And that's that's a challenge. And nearly a hammer or something against the bobsled. I think there's even a mission in this where you have to do that. DC challenge, that's it. Yeah. Damn. They were just copying them, I swear. Oh. As you can tell, Grip is next to... Next to unavailable. And since I haven't played this in a long while, I am not using the cars for potential. When you go from a Group B car to something like this, you don't shift that well. You've got a lot less power to play with, and it tends to throw you about a bit more than the fact that this is, unlike Tarmac, extremely slippery. It doesn't give you any throwback if you screw up. This bit's a... fuck. <laughs> ah, I'm not going to flashback that. But something gives me a feeling this is not going to be as good a run as previously. Oh, car repaired. So this Fiesta RS then, it's not half bad, oh shit, <laughs> that was close but I've lost some time here, the fuck, he just spat out, it's a Sebastian Ogier, so it is, right, through another hairpin, this is a nice technical section, get some speed down, this is a nice one, fucking hell, I think I got that, Right, so, in essence, this car hasn't won anything. Let me be honest here, Loeb is a king in WRC at the moment. This car is, isn't really, but I still like it nevertheless. It's the underdog. And I just think the Fiesta looks cooler than whatever Citroen are running lately. It's just the fact that Ford always tends to go with their designs kind of nice. They always tend to make something good looking, that is. But the driver should be good, but it's just Loeb. I don't know what it is. I always used to like him as a rally driver, but now... I just think he's just come to dominate, and he's skilled, but he's too good, he's just, he's made it boring, dare I say it. Nevertheless, if 
you don't know what the WRC is and you've been looking at Josh's Black Ops stuff, looking at me like I'm doing something else, well, I'm sorry, but I'm just talking about related stuff. But now, see what we've got in terms of time. I think I'm nowhere near what they're going to have. Actually, maybe an epic ending. And I somehow got them. But that was close. I thought I was not making it then. Just a second, though. Less than, actually, a couple of hundreds. Ken blocks out. Uji did a terrible time. Ugh. But anyway. There you have it, guys. Uh, this has been Conrad with some Dirt 3 gameplay. And I hope you just enjoyed that. Because I might be bringing you some more over the next few days. Anyway, peace out. And I'll leave you that.